Hi. I've had a few people ask me questions about how I'm doing and what's all going on since May seems to be one crazy month. I really thought that after 2012, everything would pretty much be back to normal and I wouldn't have any more issues, but that does not seem to be the case. Um, kind of started when I have always had just a little bit of chest pain and it comes and goes and I've had it since as far as I can remember and it would just last a day or two and it would just it would go away so I really didn't ever bring it up to any of my doctors kinda got yelled at for that by both of them but it got to where I was having the chest pain not a big deal didn't think too much of it until it lasted about a month actually a little over a month and then I would get heartburn but you know that's usually normal um, especially when I have Hashimoto's I really get heartburn especially when my thyroids kinda get a little out of balance so I went ahead and scheduled my labs got those done and then I went ahead and I saw my doctor well I have vertigo and you know I get a little bit of pressure in my ears and so when I was talking to him about my labs um, surprisingly my thyroids were completely perfect which is very rare for me because I always swing you know one way or the other I'm never really just level so I'm trying to keep that in check so and I was telling him I said um because my labs my red blood cell count was high and I was telling him I said well you know before you freak out about it I told him I was having a little bit difficulty breathing and maybe that was why it was high so he was a little worried about that and he referred me to somebody and unfortunately they were like 45 miles away so of course I rescheduled somebody closer and a doctor that you know was highly ranked um, on the website so that's what I went with well anyway he gave me a cortisone shot to help with the pressure in my ears because I'm still having the dizziness and the dizzy spells so I just you know had him check my ears real quick and then after that you know I was waiting for you know the doctor he wanted to go ahead and do a thyroid scan because I have a gorder and I was starting to worry that my gorder was inflamed uh, more so than usual and maybe that was messing with my windpipe and why I couldn't breathe so I went in and done that and that was fine my gorder um, is no bigger than it was you know last time I got it scanned so that's not the problem so then I went in and I saw a gastroenterologist and you know he was kinda concerned by a lot of the symptoms I was telling him about and really worried about the breathing and I told him I said surprisingly whenever I got the cortisone shot for my ears um, within like two three days my breathing got better and I still breathe especially if I get excited or if I talk a lot I still kind of have a little bit of breathing problems but for the most part it's a lot better than it was so we went ahead and he did you know check up and everything like that and he went ahead and he um, had me do a barium swallow um, to make sure because things were getting stuck in my throat and you know it got to where every time I swallow even now it's not as bad but it's still a pain um, it gets stuck like right here around my thyroid so that's one another reason why we were thinking it could be thyroid related um, or border related so I went ahead and did a barium swallow and I kept trying to look over and it was really funny to see when I swallow it would catch right here and then it would slowly trickle down so um, I wasn't exaggerating I you know I couldn't swallow things they really wouldn't come back up it just would take a while to go back down and so I'd have to drink a lot of water and so I eat a lot slower now because I'm trying not to choke but it's not too terribly bad you know it's just more so annoying so after we did the barium swallow and it did confirm that things were getting stuck and of course I have acid reflux so he put me on medicine and thank God that stuff worked because I was taking so many Tums a day that he got mad at me because he asked me how many I was taking in a week and I was like in a week and I was, you know then he's like how many a day and I've eaten a bottle of Tums in like two days because it's painful if you have heartburn that's constant I mean it's painful so of course I was taking Tums and the chewable ones and and everything so nothing helped so he put me on a medicine to help with the uh, the reflux and I take it once a day and it really really works thank goodness so um, I don't have that too much anymore I have to keep that under control then he went ahead and he scheduled me for the endoscopy to get the camera down my throat and when we went ahead and did that he did four biopsies um, in my esophagus and then uh, two in my esophagus and then two in my stomach I think anyway so 
everything came back normal, thank goodness. Um, I was having severe pains after, you know, the endoscope because I could feel like my stomach was, you know, flipping and flopping and squeezing and t it was just, it was very painful. I mean, it was really painful. And so along with the stomach spasms, I also now, you know, I have the esophagus spasms. So we don't know why my stomach was spasming. And so he gave me another prescription. So every time, you know, it started doing it, it would get better. And I actually wasn't going to say anything to the doctor until, you know, one of my friends, you know, she really pressured me into it because, you know, 24 to 48 hours after you have the scope done, you're supposed to let them know immediately if you have stomach pain. So, but um, I really think it was just the biopsies. And sure enough, a few days later, I think it was the biopsies because I haven't had that pain, anything like that. I still do have some stomach spasms and it causes this weird hiccup and it's kind of embarrassing, but it's nothing too painful anymore. Um, the pain that I was having in my chest is esophagus spasms and we don't know why I'm having it. And you know, like I said, I've had it since as far as I can remember, you know, and it would just last a day or so and that would be it. But, you know, things change apparently. But, you know, the food getting stuck, you know, he wanted to go ahead and just check for, for everything. So there is no bacteria, no fungus, no, you know, no celiac, which, you know, pretty much cleared with that from blood work. But this right here, you know, made sure. Um, so, you know, he went ahead and just, just wanted to make sure and check everything. So it's fine by me. Um, I don't really have too much of the spasms right now, which is a good thing. I think it's from the medicine. Um, the chest pain, it comes and goes, but it's, it's a lot more rare. But he diagnosed me with the possibility of having, and I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, so, so don't jump on me too much, esophagocinic, you know, um, oh, I'm not even going to worry about it. I, it's a long word, and the abbreviation is EOE. Basically, it's where I have like a reaction to a food, and somehow the, um, the bacteria or whatever, it gets stuck in my esophagus and it's not supposed to be there. So basically my esophagus was so inflamed and my stomach was inflamed. And I really tried to practice to say this long word wrong. I mean, right. And clearly, of course I got it wrong. I got tongue tied, so I'm sorry. Um, but it's, you know, led me down to having maybe another food allergy. And I'm already allergic to wheat because I have the eczema on my hands. So every time I eat wheat, you know, within an hour or so, my hands break out and they start bleeding. So he sent me over to an allergist. So I went ahead and I got tested the other day for food allergies. And I was just thinking, it's probably not going to be anything more than wheat. You know, it's got to be something, maybe just the acid reflux, because that can also trigger your esophagus to inflame. So I went to the allergist the other day and lo and behold... He tested me for about 80 foods, I think, 70-something, whatever, 80 foods. And a lot of this is not allergies. A lot of this is just being intolerant of it. But when you're intolerant, you're eating foods that are toxic to you. So eventually your body gets overwhelmed and it can, you know, inflame. So that's where I am right now. And with the wheat, it would be an intolerance except for the eczema. And the, even the allergist confirmed that, since I have such a reaction within an hour, it technically is an allergy. So I don't have a lot of, you know, digestive issues with the wheat. Um, some, but not most, it's mostly the eczema on my hands. And so the gastroenterologist, he actually said that, you know, we need to be careful with that because eczema can trigger this. And now I know what he was saying, food allergies. So I went to the allergist, got stuck all over my back, and I really wasn't too itchy because I get allergy testing and I get allergy shots. I give them to myself once a week at home. And so I've, I've had it before. And trust me, they itch like crazy. Well, I was only having a few itches, but nothing major. Well, no, I got tagged with a whole lot of stuff. And, you know, it's sad because like green peas and mushrooms and strawberries are very high and spinach and you know almonds so it's just it's frustrating and the most important ones that I got tagged on is dairy which is not lactose um, it's the casein so it's the protein in the dairy um, eggs and then egg yolks are actually higher and then wheat of course and chicken chicken turkey poultry so for the next 30 days, which I'm on day four now, I have to be egg-free, 
dairy free, wheat free, and poultry free. Do you know how much stuff milk has? Milk is in everything. I thought wheat was bad because trying to be gluten free is already a pain in the ass as it is. But could you imagine dairy free? I cannot find, I'm going to have to go to a specialty store just to get substitutes. So, you know, even though this is just a 30 day trial to see how I feel and what triggers it, it is so hard to find anything that is dairy free. Everything has milk in it, milk proteins, everything. I mean, there's just a handful of things that, that I can actually have. So it's a really good thing that I don't eat a lot of processed foods and that I'm already gluten free because otherwise I would just not even bother doing this. This is a pain in the butt as it is. You know, I'm already gluten free. So, but a lot of the gluten free stuff that I have has milk in it. So half the stuff I just bought and half the stuff I just cooked for the week, I cannot have. Pesto, can't have it. My tikka masala, can't have it. A lot of my um, sauces and stuff I add to my lunches, I can't have them. And it's very frustrating. But, you know, I'm just trying to work my way around it. The other day I went to Walmart and just trying to find substitutes. And I have an app on my phone that you add everything you're allergic to. And it will tell you if you can have it or to avoid it. I wanted to just go all Lilo and Stitch and be Stitch and just shove everything over and just go crazy. I was getting so frustrated and defeated because everything came up avoid milk, avoid eggs, mostly milk. And I just wanted to go down each aisle and just shove them over and walk out the door. Um, I need to eventually just go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or Central Market or something like that and spend probably an arm and a leg and just get what I need. Um, but for now, I'm going to try and just avoid it altogether. So I'm hoping that within a few days, they're saying that if any of these are my triggers, that I should start feeling better. And my body has been inflamed, and I always thought it was from the Hashimoto's, that you know when you have an autoimmune disease, that your body's going to be inflamed and mine always has been but now that I'm hearing that the inflammation could be from the foods that I'm intolerant to so that's something I haven't heard before and it's something I would have done a long time ago because my leg if you see my other videos it's a hot mess I want to chop it off sometimes because I'm tired of it but my leg swells and you know it's got the material um, pre edema on it so it's got that red patch and everything and it's not going to heal until my thyroid is level for a long time and my leg doesn't swell and so it could take a long time and I'm getting frustrated with it but I did not realize that the foods I was eating could be causing the inflammation so a lot of my joints hurt you know and they flare and they haven't been flaring lately which is fantastic but they're still hurt and everything is just doesn't feel right I don't feel great you know which I don't even know what that feels like anyway but not eating these foods could stop the inflammation I'm gonna do it so even though this this diet for the next 30 days is gonna be brutal um, I'm gonna try it because they're saying within a few days well, I'm on day four now they're saying you know within the next week or so I should start feeling a lot better and the inflammation should be going away and I'm looking at my my leg and usually my ankle can get to be like three inches bigger than the other one around, you know. But it's actually looking pretty normal. And for me, that's a big deal. I haven't seen my leg not swell up in years. So it's, it's really weird to see that. And even my foot doesn't look as swollen. So I don't know if I'm just hopeful or if this is really happening or if this is temporary. Um, after the 30 days, I can incorporate one thing on my major list because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm tagged with. See all the little numbers? But the ones with the stars are the ones that he says avoid completely. And he sees a lot of it. And it's mostly all the major food groups. Again, the cow's milk, the wheat, eggs, turkey, chicken, any poultry. So sad because I eat a lot of chicken but you know now I have to go with steak or pork you know so you got to do what I got to do and I can't even switch over cow's milk for almond milk because almonds are tagged so if I'm going to try and avoid my toxins why am I going to switch one for another one that is pretty much actually it's a little bit worse so that's where I'm at right now I'm hopeful that in the next 30 days 
it will maybe just be food related and it's something that I can, you know, get either get completely out of my system or have in moderation. And um, and he just told me just to worry about the major ones, but honestly, I'm I'm trying to avoid all of it because why not? I mean, if I'm going to get rid of my body, I mean, because who says that, you know, one of the major ones is the issue. I eat green beans all the time. I eat green peas all the time. I eat mushrooms all the time. You know, I mostly eat fruits and vegetables. So if I'm going to cut it out, I might as well just go all out and cut everything. And that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. A um, few things I don't really eat. So, but I can't even have tuna. No tuna because that's tagged. That's another one. But what I'm going to do is see how I feel and then slowly incorporate things back. Um, I have to go see him in the next month to see how we're going and to see what to incorporate back. I really want to incorporate dairy because it is so hard to find dairy. And if we find out that one of these is my trigger, then I really think I need to avoid it altogether because my esophagus closed up on me and it got so inflamed, I couldn't breathe. And... You know, my doctor kept asking me, you know, why I didn't go to the ER. And I was telling him, I said, well, I was waiting on it to get worse. And he, you know, made the joke that, what, you're waiting on me to die? So I don't think it was that bad, but obviously I'm not one to talk because it took me three weeks to see a doctor when I broke my knee. So, you know, I'm not really, I always wait till I'm about half dead to see anybody anyway. And for years I've had this pain in my chest and I never even mentioned it. So... You know, I guess I need to start listening to them and start, you know, trying to think, oh, it'll go away. I can suck it up. I can handle it. But that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, I'm not really feeling too much different. Um, a little bit more energy today. Yesterday was kind of bad. I don't know why. I don't know if it's toxins getting out of my body or what it was, but I just was not feeling that great. But um, that's pretty much where we're at right now. So trying to go on this 30 day diet to see what if you know anything is my trigger and see if this will help with the inflammation and see if um, this is why my esophagus closed up because I don't eat wheat or gluten and if that was my trigger my only trigger then it wouldn't happen so for my esophagus to completely swell the way it did to crush my windpipe I kind of need to um, to really take this seriously, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So yeah, it's it's a pain, and there's so many things I cannot eat, but there's a lot of things I can eat, and I can have my wine, which that just made my day yesterday. Um, I can have gummy bears. So far, there's the only two things that are sweet that I found that I can have because I can't even have chocolate, and I only really like dark chocolate. I don't like milk, and dark chocolate does have um, milk protein in it. Yay! So I can't even have that. Um, it's just pretty much finding what I can have and just try not to think of, oh my goodness, everything I can't have. Because that's where I was at Walmart when I wanted to just, you know, rampage through the store and just knock everything over. So, you know, I'm trying to think of it as, these are things I can have. I can have my wine. I can have my avocados. I can have rice. I can have steak. I love steak. I love any reason to buy steak. Um, fish. You know, just stay away from tuna, <laughs> and which sucks because tuna. So um, I love salmon, and I can have salmon. And so that's pretty much where I am. See how it goes. I've got about another 25 days to go. And I'm hoping that this will be what is going on. And it sucks that it might be another food allergy, especially having EOE. Um, cause right now he's saying it was a possibility, but the fact that I do have food intolerances, it might actually be what it is. So I'll see him. So I don't want to diagnose myself, but he was just waiting to see if it was another food allergy and I think it might be it. So, and the fact that I have a lot of the symptoms of the EOE, so, and it was pretty much, you know, almost diagnosed in the, um, the endoscopy. So See how I go in 30 days, incorporate one thing back, see what he wants to incorporate or if I get to choose. And then when I incorporate it back, see how I feel. And if that is my trigger, I I guess I'll know. Um, he did want me to have an EpiPen. I actually have two already because of my allergy shots for trees and everything else. So I guess he took it a lot more seriously than I did when he offered me an EpiPen. <laughs> so again, 
we'll see. But again, my leg, it's it's not really that swollen today. And for me, that's a big deal. I can actually see my ankle and my foot. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to see it because there's tons of scars and it's just a mess. So, but that's pretty much what's going on. Um, I go back and see the um, gastroenterologist. I need to email him because they are communicating and go from there and Guess I'll let you know in 30 days how I feel. Hopefully, you know, a lot better, and hopefully it's just one of these or the problem, and I'll avoid it completely, even if it's just an intolerance. Um, when your esophagus closes up on you and you can't breathe, that's scary, and I'm going to take it very seriously. So wish me luck, and hopefully I don't, you know, go through the store and shove things over. So if you hear somebody on the news lost their mind at Walmart, it was probably me. So anyway... Thanks for everybody for asking and being concerned, and I just figured I'd make a video so I could just answer everybody's questions. Thank you so much.